Hi, everyone. It's Steve Politi from NJ Advance Media. This week's Rutgers Rant is brought to you by the New Brunswick Development Corporation. A big thank you to our sponsor and to all of our listeners for the continued support. Now let's get to the show. From NJ.com and the Star Ledger, welcome to the Rutgers Rant, your one-stop podcast for the Scarlet Knights, with your host, Steve Politi, and Rutgers Insiders, Keith Sargent and James Cratch. Let's start shopping. Hello, everybody. Steve Politi here from NJ Advance Media. Welcome back to the Rant. Cratch and Sarge, you're here with me as always. Well, last week, guys, we started with gaining a quarterback. This week, uh, we lose a quarterback, Artur Sikowski, headed for the transfer portal. I guess I look at it this way, fellas. I wouldn't have been the least bit surprised if this news broke in January. But now, you know, with spring practice starting now, uh, you know, it, it seems like it's a reaction to, to landing the, the quarterback recruit Gavin Wimsat out of Kentucky. You know, but that kid's not getting here until January at the earliest. So, I mean, Cratch, I guess I just wonder – a, the timing, and B, if, if Arsikowski is, is missing the broader picture here that he's still, you know, in, in, a, in competing for a job and certainly one injury away, even if, if he doesn't win the job of having it. I think at the end of the day, the, the bigger issue was he just didn't feel he was truly competing for the job. And I, I go back to the last game against Nebraska. Art didn't play well, but you know, it could have been a lot worse when you're playing a game in sub-freezing temperatures and a pandemic a couple days before Christmas. The whole team is burnt out. They went to Johnny Langan for that last competitive drive. I mean, that kind of said it all right there that they just – Art was never – Shiano and Gleason, Art just was never in their plans, and everything they said publicly. Every time he played well, you know, beat Purdue, help beat Purdue, help beat Maryland. They were very kind of lukewarm in their praise. They always went back to Vedral, and I think at that point, it just became realized it just wasn't going to happen here for him, uh, which is unfortunate. You know, it was a, a really great kid, uh, worked really hard. I think you know he he kind of got screwed in in a, in a lot of ways. You know, obviously he didn't play well in many ways, especially his freshman year. And I think in terms of timing, I was a little surprised that it happened before spring practice. I thought it might happen after spring practice, after he gives it one more shot to try to take, you know, overtake Vedral. But by going in the portal now, he's arguably one of the best quarterbacks in the portal. So this could be a point where his market is at its highest right in right now in, in between before the second wave kind of hits once all the spring practices are done across the country. Uh, that's an interesting theory. I guess, you know, you, you, you there certainly are demand for quarterbacks. I, I just, you know, if I'm in the market, if I'm, if I'm a power five school and I'm looking at Art Sikowski now, okay, he was at Miami, didn't get the job there, and with the Rutgers, didn't get the job there. I guess I'm, I'm wondering now, you know, what are you, what are you getting the third time around? You seem bullish that he's going to be a Power Five guy. Sarge, I'm not, I'm not convinced that he's going to be a starter at the Power Five level. I guess that's why, you know, in some ways, I, I, you know, you would think that being in a place where he already – you know, knows an offense at least, uh, knows what the situation is, knows the quarterback room's not that stacked. I mean, what do you think? Do you think he can go someplace next year, Sergeant, and start p Power 5? I think it's going to depend on the system. Um, just like it, uh, really at Rutgers, go going back to Cratchit's point, I think uh, he just was not um, a fit for what Sean Gleason wanted to do. And no matter what they said, no matter how they wanted to spin it, um, Sikowski is a pro-style uh, type quarterback, um, has a little bit – the mobility, but he's not going to do the spread stuff that Johnny Langan does or even uh, uh, Vedral does. Um, I think the, the, the to, uh, to your point, Steve, you know, a lot of people look at Arsikowski as the guy who his true freshman year when he was a 17 year old kid thrown against uh, to the Wolves on a, on, on a team with a uh, lack of uh, playmakers threw 18 interceptions and completed 50% uh, of his passes. That's not what Sikowski was last year. He threw three touchdowns, didn't throw a pick. Um, 81 pass attempts, didn't throw a pick, uh, completed 60% of his passes, you know, albeit, you know, it wasn't, you know, wasn't uh, prime, you know, he, he, you know, played in, 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 in prime, uh, in prime action and, you know, just did everything that he was supposed to do. So if you're looking at what, what he did last year, his body of work, you just have to almost just forget about his true freshman year. That's what it's going to take for, for a school to, to kind of give a, a soul on him to crash his point. I think, you know, at this point, he's probably the best quarterback out there. Yeah, it, it's, it leaves an interesting situation here in, in his wake. And I, I don't, you know, we talked to Greg Shannon yesterday in, in a conference call with the media. 
Uh, I asked him point blank, is he going to add anybody? He said, no. So this is the quarterback room. We got Noah Vedral, you know, and then we got a lot of unknowns, Cratch. I mean, I get, you know, and the way Vedral plays, we saw it obviously a couple times last year. You know, this is, this is a guy who's, you know, who's not built like, uh, the battering ram of the quarterback that he he treats himself. I mean, he charges into the line. He's not afraid to get contact. He, you know, uh, he, he, he injured his ankle late in the season, uh, banged up during the season. I mean, you're, I think you're seeing a situation now where one of these guys is going to play. They're going to they're going to go to this room. I mean, give me the pecking order in your eyes now for what's behind Noah Vettel. Well, I think you know, if you're Rutgers, you have to hope that Evan Simon emerges this spring takes that number two job because I just kind of go back to the read I got and talking to people from the, the prior staff was hey Cole Snyder's great kid might be a good Big Ten backup Evan Simon is the guy who we really think has ability to potentially be a starter in the Big Ten they need him to step up because you're right Vedral you know in durability it's not just last year if you go back to 2019 at Nebraska he got knocked out of one of the games he started there due to injury I think he missed the second half of the game the way he plays is conducive as we've seen to injuries and the the kind of the bad thing for Rutgers is I feel like you need to keep running him and using him in that way to have your offense be effective just because of the limitations he has with his arm strength so yeah those guys are going to play I would think that Simon you hope is the guy who emerges as the starter but it's going to be interesting because you know Vedral, Simon, Snyder, Langan all have eligibility coming up. I think you'll see Johnny Langan have the same role he had in the offense last year, uh, this season. But I just don't – I mean, if Vedro gets hurt in the second quarter of a competitive game, my guess is Rutgers would probably try to use Langan as much as they could. I don't know if Lang, if you need a quarterback to start three games, if Langan is going to be that guy who's going to be a full-time quarterback like that. I just – I think to his limitations, we, we saw what he could do, uh, you know, the 19-year with, with Nunzio as the coach. So, yeah, I think you hope that Simon emerges. And then, then the, the big question is you got to keep one of them next year to be the backup potential to Wimsat. <laughs> It has a good point. Uh, a lot of unknowns. Sarge, what do you think? I mean, are we, are we sleeping on, on Langan here? I mean, you know, he's, he's done another year. He's a guy who's you know, won a big 10 game, obviously not, you know, throwing the ball down the field, but certainly, you know, what he did at Purdue is an impressive uh, way to win a big 10 road game. Would he be the guy after Noah Vagel in your mind? No. no. Um, I, look, I mean, I, he's always exceeded my expectations. I mean, you know, yeah. I, you know, 2019 alone, he, he, he exceeded. And then, you know, last year he won, uh, you know, big 10 games without him, they would not uh, beat Purdue. They, you know, <laughs> he really was an X factor in a lot of, a lot of games last season. That being said, I think I, I agree with crash. Like if, if Vedral was to go down in the second quarter of a game, you know, it would be laying in, but you know, as a full-time starter, no, I don't think he's a full-time starter at the big 10 level. Um, I, I, I'm intrigued. I mean, we're not going to see a spring practice uh, uh, this spring, you know, but I am intrigued by, by, by you know, reading the tea leaves on, on, on whether or not, you know, Cole Snyder or Evan Simon, uh, you know, emerge as a guy. Also, just from an inside baseball thing, uh, did you notice the, uh, you know, the, the, the little uh, quip that uh, Greg Seattle had, uh, Steve, during, during the uh, Zoom call yesterday? No, where he's talking about Gavin about Rupp, uh, the, uh, the the walk-on quarterback who will be uh, arriving uh, c- come uh, training camp. And he goes, well, I, you know, I, 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 you know, because, you know, kid's name is Gavin. He, 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 he slipped and he said he almost uh, uh, mentioned another uh, 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 quarterback who's going to be arriving oh, named Gavin. Yeah, yeah, he joked. <laughs> he, he, made, he made light of it. But, you know, because obviously NCAA rules, you know, they don't allow him to, to mention Ga- Gavin Wimsett's name until he signs. Yeah. But, you know, he, he, he did make light of it that, that you know, he started uh, talking about a quarterback named Gavin, you know, coming. But it won't be, uh, you know, the, the hot shot recruit coming in uh, until he signs. That's outstanding. It's funny. This, the, the, and this is a general thought about just the program in general. You feel like right now something really exciting is happening potentially with the way they're recruiting with, with, this, with this kid who, again, everyone I talk to tells me he's the real deal as a quarterback. And yet you got another, you got 12 games before you get there, right? You know, so it's just, I mean, and these 12 games could be difficult. So it's sort of, it's sort of a weird, uh, it's sort of a weird waiting situation. Uh, all right. We don't have to wait for spring football. I, I also though. don't. Yeah, I also don't think to to your question that you asked him that that you know w- would he bring in a transfer quarterback you know uh, you know through the portal, 
I don't think he wants to in any way uh, impact, um, you know, Gavin Wimsett's decision until, you know, until he officially signs because so much can happen. You know, the, the, you know, so many things, you know, one of those state schools, one of those SEC schools can come in late. You know, I think he wants to make it clear that, you know, that, that Wimsett will have the, the best chance to, uh, you know, come, Come once he enrolls to, to start. And I know you know a, a you know a quarterback could be a, a senior, but who knows? I mean, yeah, nowadays with the eligibility, you already have Vedral who has you know another uh, you know another year beyond this season uh, with eligibility. So I I don't think he wants to add another quarterback to to kind of you know just I don't think he wants to mess with the numbers at this point. No, that's a great point. Absolutely, you know, this and that's and that's going to be. You know, as as exciting as it is to to have that kid's commitment, you know, it's going to be a eight months of continuing to recruit him until he can sign. There's no question that you know that <laughs> someone told me someone's that program told me that they don't say, oh, he's going to Rutgers and stop. You know, <laughs> they're 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 still very much uh, uh, he's going to be recruiting that kid. All right, let's talk some spring football. We have the details now. Um, and Greg Shano said he wanted to wait as long as possible to give everyone a fair shake to compete this spring. Um, but now I guess he's, he's up against it uh, with the summer school session starting. Um, and if you're curious why the spring game is a Thursday night, uh, I've been told that it's because they want to give – uh, the, the players two full weekends off before summer school starts. So there you go. So as opposed to having it on a Saturday afternoon where they, they lose that weekend, they have it on a Thursday night, then the players can go home and or go whatever they want to do for uh, two weeks because most of them obviously will be back before that for I mean, two, full, two full weekends. I mean, how great yeah. is that, huh? He's Ooh. just – he's man. Re- Greg living is it soft. up as a college athlete. College Greg player. is getting soft. There's, there's your headline right there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Of course. No, I mean, obviously all these, all they've went through and have another COVID pause. I totally, it, it makes, makes good sense. What are we looking for crash? I mean, spring starting, uh, their spring games are going everywhere. So it's definitely late. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what do you think we're going to see here in the next few weeks or that well, we're, not gonna we're, we're not going to see? We're not going to see any. <laughs> uh, look, I, I think that the big key for Rutgers is going to be, I think, as you said, back to quarterback competition, uh, figure out the offensive line. Although I don't think the offensive line is as big of a concern this year, just because of the fact they kind of exceeded expectations last year. You added a, a transfer from Temple. You've got guys with experience there. Uh, I wrote about this morning. I think the secondary is is a really interesting area where they've got depth concerns at safety. They've got good depth at cornerback. You know, Peyton Powell, I asked Greg Sean about him. It sounds like he might be banged up, so we might not even see him in the spring game. So the, the mystery surrounding who was basically, you know, Greg's first big splash back at Rutgers, getting him to flip from Utah. We still haven't seen him at all. Uh, you know, special teams obviously are, are locked in. So I just think it's for them it's going to be depth on the defensive side of the ball, you know, finding more playmakers on offense. I'm really curious about Joshua Youngblood, the return All-American return transfer from Kansas State, just because everyone is kind of locking him in as, oh, he's going to be like Aaron Crookshank, immediately a playmaker on offense. I think it's easier said than done, and I'm also intrigued, even if he does emerge as an offensive player, is there room for him in the offense? Because Shameen, Crookshank, Bo, they've got a lot of guys, Youngblood size with Youngblood speed, you know, can they get a role for all of those guys and Aaron Young and have Isaiah Pacheco have a big role and Giovanni Haskins, who they seem very high on. So I'm also intrigued to see how they kind of use their offensive weapons. It's the first, this is the first time we've had uh, more than one offensive weapon. So that that's, I mean, that that's an interesting, even to have the discussion that they have to, you know, use spring to figure out which guys are going to be the, the weapons is the good news. Uh, Sarge, what are you looking for in the next few weeks? Um, yeah, again, I think the playmakers, which playmakers, I mean, I asked, uh, Shiana, I, uh, this, this is unprecedented. They've never gone into a season with all 11 starters back from a year ago. So, you know, he kind of dismissed it, kind of like downplayed, you know, that, that idea talked about, he said, well, yeah, everyone's back, but you know, this was a three and 16 a, a year ago. So they need to make improvements, which, you know, will we will be, will be able to see those uh, improvements emerge, you know, come, come uh, um, training camp? Um, that's, I guess, going to be the million-dollar question. Um, and, again, I think Sean Gleason's offense, they didn't get a spring camp a year ago to, to kind of uh, put that in. They kind of threw it in on a fly. Um, you know, now that he has a full year under his belt, you know, what, what types of, of improvements will, will they make? Well, Noah Vedral, more than anyone, 
will he benefit from 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 a year of seasoning, you know, in in that offense? Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. At least we will see the spring game, right? They're gonna let us into that. Shiano, Shiano said we we could we might even see him in person, maybe from afar. We have to, yeah, we're, we're going to be allowed in the building, but we have to face the other way. We're not actually allowed. Look, to I see. Watch. Right, that, that's, we'll good. Be, that's fair. Yeah, we, we could just listen for it. Developments <laughs> from behind us, <laughs> and I love because each time you know we obviously we go way back with Shiano and practice Sarge and I, but. Um, Every time he mentions it, it's like he's like he's pretending that he's upset. Ah, oh, you know, really like to see you guys there. You don't want to see us there. Give me he a does break. Not. <laughs> <laughs> he does not. Uh, much as we love that he, he pretends at least. That's nice of him. All right, let's dive into true or false, guys. Uh, you know how it works. I'll give you a statement. Tell me if it's true or false. We'll talk about it later. Art Sikowski, true or false. Arcus, Art Sikowski will start a game for a Power 5 school next season. Cratch, true or false. True. Sarge? True. I'm going false. True or false? Noah Vedra will be healthy enough to start nine games next season. Crash, true or false? True. Okay. Sarge? True. That would be a win if I think if that happens, definitely. Uh, True or false? This spring is most important for sorting out issues in the secondary. Cratch, you wrote about it. True or false? True. Sarge? I'm going to say false because I think for the last three weeks, I think I've agreed with Cratch on every single true false. I, so come I up have to go false. I need even if I do believe here. it's true. This is, this is my fault. All right. Uh, true or false, the spring is more important for finding playmakers. Cratch, you said true last one, so you're false this time. Sarge, true or false? True. True. Uh, I'm going to say false. I think it's most important for the quarterback. Sorry. True or false, see Vivian Stringer will coach all five years of her new contract. Cratch, true or false? True. Wow. Sarge, true or false? <laughs> she's going to outlive us. I mean, uh, yes, true. I'm gonna, she's uh, definitely uh, coaching uh, for getting another contract. I've already written about her, her last contract before, like 10 years ago. Oh, she did her last contract. Uh, true or false? <laughs> Retention bonus, $6.3 million. Rutgers overpaid. Cratch, true or false? Oh, boy. Uh, uh. <laughs> Dropping that bomb on your feet right there. I know. What happens. Uh, <laughs> false. Okay. Sorry. True or false? Oh, false. Uh, I mean, the retention bonus, guys. Come on. I, that's that's true. I'm sorry. I, that's, that's tough. Yeah, Pykele has one. I mean, they, uh, you know, it's Pykele has standard. one. Yeah, um, I guess so. You're right. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Standard. Sorry, coach. I take it back. Uh, true or false? Dollar for dollar. Michael Neal is the best coach in Rutgers women's soccer. True or false? Scratch. False. I know he. I know where he's going with that. Oh. True or false? <laughs> Sarge. True. You're oh, I want to hear this. I want to hear this all response. Right, that's all right. But we'll come back to that in a minute. Finally, true or false? Super League is coming to college sports. Scratch. You've been tweeting about this like a madman. True or false? <laughs> I will say false for football, but I, I think it could be true for basketball. Sarge, you think there's a Super League on the horizon? Uh, uh, false. False. Yeah, for now, false. Maybe. 20 years from now. All right. But still, I like write that in there. Dollar, dollar for dollar. Michael Neal. Now, this is, his, this is the ninth straight NCAA tournament appearance for women's soccer. That's pretty impressive. I think there's a final four in there, right, at some point. Um, I mean, it's hard to argue with. He's doing with mostly Jersey players. That's a pretty good track record of success. I guess, Kratz, you're going you're gonna to tell me that uh, Scott Goodale is, is number one. Well, who are you gonna tell me? No, I, 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 I wouldn't even like. I think like I think Goody at this point is with 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 C. Viv, Peichel, Shiana. Like you kind of put them to the side. Like they're a separate class of coaches or records. No, I would actually. Side? What do you mean put them to the side because they make more money? Or no, that yeah, exactly. They're like a to- a top tier sport. I mean, I think dollar for dollar, the best coach at Rutgers. I'll say I'll give uh, one male coach, one female coach. I think Meredith Civico, I would say, is probably dollar for dollar, maybe the best coach at Rutgers. Uh, I think Steve Owens is getting there pretty quick. He's been here for ten minutes. I can even, that, yeah, now. he's been here for ten minutes, and now yeah. and now they have a baseball team that is in the, playing in the top half of the Big Ten. So mm-hmm. you know, they haven't done it yet, though. They have not. I mean, they know. Yeah, <laughs> too early to tell. With him, they, it's too, 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 too early, and it's a weird year where where uh, yeah. you can't really. I mean, I, I, I yeah, you know, Mike O'Neill's track. The, the question uh, on a simplest term, scratch is, you know, what, and Mike O'Neill, you know, he's uh, what the sixth highest paid uh, coach, you know, in, you know, on, on the Rutgers landscape, and what he's done 
uh, it's Michael O'Neill, without question. I, I see where, where, where you're going, and certainly field hockey, what, what, what uh, uh, Coach uh, Civico uh, you know, ha- has resources-wise, you can make a case that she's done, done, uh, done more but with, with less. But, you know, and she still you know, does not have the track record or body of work that, that Michael O'Neill has. No, like, I, look, believe me, like, I'm not trying to knock Michael O'Neill in any way, but I will say that he inherited a program from Glenn Crooks that wasn't exactly, you know, at the bottom. That's fair. Know, like yeah. – that's fair. Field hockey one. He's taking it to another level. Yeah. So. He's just he got to destroying. he got him to the final four. Right. He's just destroying Mike O'Neill. That's what that's what I heard. That, all that I'm being kidding. said, I mean, we you know we, we you know not not to give him too much. You know, I mean, we're not his his agents here, but you know, I kind of thought that they had a good chance to win the Big Ten a title this year, and they yeah. you know they got to the semifinals uh, and they lost. You saw what happened? And, the ball know, bounced off two two posts. I, get, I, I saw. I, I did. Mean, I did. I did. Good, I good grief. Yeah, but it's soccer. But, yeah. but you know, I know. And, uh, that's right. soccer, though. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, there's other chances, and you know. You know, at some point they're gonna have to win a Big Ten title, and okay. and you know, one, at some one point someone's gonna have to win a Big Ten title, right? It's not, yes, it's, exactly. It's Maybe lacrosse yeah. says it, men's lacrosse says it this year, but um, look, I mean, I, again, I, you know, he has accomplished a ton. Back to the NCAA tournament, you know, uh, you know, he's done a great job. Uh, all right, let's dive into the Stringer contract. Uh, no surprise that she uh, signed, re-signed. She, she made it very clear she wanted to come back. 73 years old. I had a, about a half an hour chat with her about that. Uh, it's fascinating. I mean, she's, you know, <laughs> you go back and forth. You wonder, okay, now they, they lost, I think, four of their f- top five starters off the last team. Uh, Diamond Johnson, most significantly, into the transfer portal. So, you know, she could be facing another rebuild. And you wonder – Someone who's 73 years old, someone whose team has who has underachieved in March, at least uh, in the you know the last 10 years, uh, last Sweet 16, it was 2009. Uh, you wonder, you know, if, is, if this is might be the right move for her, and she might be the, you know, certainly the uh, one of the greatest coaches in Rutgers history, any sport. Uh, but you do wonder long if it's the right move for the program right now. Um, you know, sorry, Jen, I'm not saying anything against C. Vivian Stringer. She can prove me wrong. She can come out here and. You know, add a top. She just had a top five recruiting class. You know, just a couple of years ago, uh, but there's a big but there. Do you agree? Yeah, and um, so people are going to say, well, you can't really ping her on. You know, this wave of of players, Diamond Johnson, and the other players who have who have entered the transfer portal, and you know, the fact that you know five, you know, are top five scores are basically basically gone. You can't really you know, hammer for that because that's what college you know, basketball is you know, across the country. That being said, you know, this is not the first time she's had a wave of like, promising players who you thought that she was going to be able to develop and who have left. I mean, this has happened you know, with the last you know, three or four cycles of she, she's someone who likes to bring in huge recruiting classes, develop them. Um, this has happened now three or four times now over the last uh, decade or so. And it's the reason why they haven't uh, gotten taken to the next step. And by the next step, I mean, you know, the Sweet 16. Um, they haven't made it since, uh, I think, 20, uh, 2009, you know, if, if I'm not mistaken. So I think, you know, will she be able to adapt? That's going to be the biggest question. You know, I mean, it, you know, and you can make the same question with, with, with Steve Peichel, you know, you know, Will he be able to 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 get some of these uh, you know players from the transfer portal as, as well? Steve Peichel is a developmental uh, coach. Like he's clearly wants to you know those those three four year guys who are going to be able to develop and uh, make better. Um, will he be able to adapt? But certainly Vivian Stringer at her age, what she's done, you know, she, I, I I I agree with you, Steve. I think there's a big question on whether or not she's going to be able to, to actually adapt. And here's the difference between between Peichel and Stringer, as I see it. You know, and and Stringer's the coach who, it's not a, it's just not a pleasant. You know, you, sh- you show up there expecting to be coached hard, and it's difficult, and she makes it uncomfortable. And then by the end of the four years, and believe me, I've talked to you know dozens of her former players who they they still come back from Cheney when she gets you know when she makes her thousandth win. I mean, they just love Absolutely. her for life, yep. right yep. afterward. But you have to get to the afterward. And that's the thing with, with, with these, with coaches who are demanding. And, and I think college sports is changing to the point now where a lot of those coaches crash. And tell me if you agree, a lot of those coaches are going to be, you know, sort of pushed to, I don't know, either change or get out of the sport because it's, you know, the moment a player hits adversity now they can push a button and they can be out. No, no doubt. I mean, I, I think it's, it's kind of fascinating that like the trend we've seen in professional sports, where like you know, 
the, the the Brooklyn Nets hire Steve, you know, Steve Nash basically to be the big three's best friend instead of their coach. You know, Aaron Boone is basically, you know, just there to tell the Yankees, to, to, to massage egos for the Yankees and tell them they're doing their best when they're horrible. We're, we're, we're going to start to see that in college sports when all of a sudden the, the, ta- the, the old school, you know, taskmaster coach is not needed. They, they, they need a new age coach who's going to, you know, be a player's coach. And I think that you're absolutely right. That's something that Vivian is going to have to adjust for. I mean, look, I, I think I, I understand why fans were frustrated and think it's too much money. At the end of the day, you know, the two of the last three years, they've been finished third place in the Big Ten. Yeah. They make the NCAA. They don't win games there, but they basically make the tournament most years. They're competitive. They have a, a very – they have a small but fiercely loyal, pretty generous fan base when it comes to donations to the programs of the university – She's going to be here as long as she wants to be here. And I think that at this point, the question is, you know, how long does she want to do it? Obviously, the contract has the same clause as the previous one did. If she wants to pivot to an administrative role, they will do that for her. They can't make an open-ended guarantee, but they've made it very clear that they want her to be part of Rutgers for the rest of her life. Hey, Rutgers Rant listeners, it's Steve Politi from NJ Advance Media. We appreciate you supporting this podcast and the sponsors who help us continue doing it. This week's podcast is brought to you by the New Brunswick Development Corporation. If you listen to this show, you love Rutgers. And if you love Rutgers, you know the positive impact that DevCo has made on the campus and its community. We thank the New Brunswick Development Corporation for its continued support and for helping make this podcast possible. Now back to the show. Whether it's his coach, as an ambassador. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think at this point, the big question is going to be, they've added two players in the transfer port already this week. You know, can she get this team to be competitive? I think if she can get this team to be NCAA caliber team this coming season, then she's got a chance to potentially get over that hump and maybe they will be a winning team the next, for the rest of her tenure. All right, Sarge, you alluded to the hoops exodus on the other side. Uh, we now know that Montez Mathis is going to St. John's, correct? Miles Johnson ends up at UCLA, the inferior engineering school, Sarge. All that research that we did, um, <laughs> apparently that wasn't as important. Uh, Stanford him. had Condoleezza Rice call him. Did he re- she, it, she really yes, call him? Yes, it was, it was great. It was one of those like, great recruiting legal? stories. <laughs> well, she's, I, I, she, she, um, I believe she's the – she there's some sort of like uh, group not group but like I'm gonna mangle it. She works at Stanford. Okay. So I'm reading one of these recruiting stories. You know these paint by numbers recruiting stories. Who are you talking to? What you like? And Miles is like, oh yeah, and Dr. Condoleezza Rice called me, and it was oh, just yeah. like thrown in there with no context, no yeah. follow up. Let's just go. Let's tra- next grab. Let's talk about his stats. It's like <laughs> Condi Rice. <laughs> and he said no to Condi. Sorry, Condi. I'm go. I'm going to Hollywood. Uh, all right. The bigger question, and again, we talked about it last week, and we're still we're still in the same spot. I mean, what is is he going to add anybody, or is that just it's just going to be a it's going to be a, a one one way exit door here from this program? What are you hearing? They're talking to people. Yeah. I mean, there you know, there's other names that are uh, you know emerging, and um, but again, I think you know, Steve Heichel, you know, he's not the type of guy who squeezes recruits and uh, you know i and you know maybe maybe you could say you know in, in some ways that's good you know i mean you know you, you, but he's just not go- going to say listen you know it's you know it's do or die time now the scholarship is, is here you know might not be here tomorrow he's not that type of coach um so your guess is as good as mine right now i've talked to a lot of people on, on the inside to see time and, t- and timing of all this and everyone's just kind of a you know everyone's confident that he's going to get get uh, you know, a couple of these guys, but um, until it happens, you know, to, you know, Montez Mathis, I know a lot of people are, are you know, have asked me about, about him. I just th- th- think that he wasn't thrilled with his role. And I think St. John's is a better fit for him. Like, you know, what, what they do tempo wise. And I think it's going to be a great fit for him, you know, there. So um, it's, 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 it's a big loss for Rutgers. No question. I think that he was going to be a guy who they probably penciled in as a starter, but um you know, I'm, I'm, you know, still waiting and, uh, you know, uh, like everyone else as far as who, who they're going to be able to, to get out of this transfer. Are we operating under the assumption now that Geo Baker and Ron Harper Jr. are back? I mean, is that, is that a safe statement, you think? Am I? Yeah. I mean, 
everyone, you know, you talked on the inside says that, that, that Geo Baker, um, you know, his plan is to come back. He wants to be, you know, um, yeah, he still wants to take this, uh, you know, and I, I'll be at the forefront and see this through. Uh, it's probably easier for him to do it, you know, as a college athlete. He's getting a second meeting with Mark Emmert. Um, you know, we're still probably, you know, weeks, if not months away from, from this get, uh, getting uh, passed. And, you know, if it, if it happens, he's going to be obviously someone who's going to take a bow right up to, yeah, at the top of the people who, who you know, are going to be able to, to be credited for, for this. Um, Ron Harper, I know, you know, at, at, uh, you know, having a degree, I know academics is very important to the family. Um I never like to uh, say, I know, you know, a lot of people just like dismiss the fact that these two guys are, are going to, you know, be drafted this year. You know, I, they have to go through the process and all that other stuff. So I'm not going to weigh in on opinion on whether or not, you know, how they're going to do in, at the NBA combine. Um, but my expectation, knowing that, you know, the academics is important for, for Ron Harper Jr. And knowing that uh, Geo Baker really wants to see this NIL thing through, Never got a chance to be, you know, the the big man on campus. You know, you know. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get fans back in the stands, and there's going to be some normalcy this fall. You know, I, 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 my expectation, you know, is is both will be back. All right, let's dive into some Rutgers Insider question, gentlemen. Um, as you guys know, nj.com backslash insider. We thank you for subscribing to our content and paying money for it. And giving us questions. We have a bunch of them related to basketball, most of the same variety. Uh, and it definitely, guys, it's definitely panic mode. At least it's, it's getting close to it. Uh, people wondering if this team is going to be uh, the team that we see now. Uh, here's one from Steve P. from Long Valley. I see so much movement in the basketball transfer portal, yet we have a lot of departures and no replacements yet. I'm concerned that Pike hasn't brought in any new players. Can someone ask what's going on here? Uh, if Geo and Harper leave, we don't have much of a team and definitely not a very competitive Big Ten team. Crouch, I think we can agree on that. If Geo and Harper leave, there's it's not a basketball team or Rutgers. If Geo and Harper stay and they don't add anybody, is that, you know, if you have Caleb McConnell, Paul McKay, you got Cliff up front. I mean, what, 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 do, you, what do you think that team is? Well, that team's going to have the easiest non-conference schedule in the history of mankind. <laughs> I would say that they're going to be eight, they're going to be yeah. Nine, yeah. ten and zero or nine and one. Basically, what happens yeah. with the well? That, that's we don't know if they're going to play Seton Hall. You know, I, I've, I have, a, I have, I have this strong feeling. No, no reporting here that that's the Seton Hall Rutgers game will somehow you know not be able to be played this year. I think he's looking for a window. Still looking for a window. Still, still looking for a window. Yeah. You know, I. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think if, if Gio and Ron come back and they don't add, add anyone from the portal, like, that's a team that best-case scenario is kind of floating around 500 maybe, you know, probably starts off strong in the non-conference, slides in the Big Ten. Uh, look, they got to add someone. And I, I, I still think at the end of the day, you know, for what it's worth, people get on Pykele for recruiting all the time. The guy has landed, I think, five of the top 20, you know, ranked recruits in the history of Rutgers basketball. Like he's gotten four stars. He's done pretty good, all things considered. Right. Um, so I, I still think you got to have give him a little bit of the benefit right. of the doubt that he's going to figure something out. But yeah, they definitely need to add someone on top of those two guys. And if one or two of those guys do not come back, they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. I mean, if you assume that Jaden Jones, who is a, one of these big recruits, is is a rotational guy, and then get someone something out of the freshman from other freshmen from last year, be it Luke Nathan or or uh, Oscar or Palmquist or I don't know, uh, you know that they would have. But you still need a rebounder. You still need someone who can an outside shot. I mean, there there are a lot of needs there, Sarge. And I don't, you know, I I understand the patience part of it, but um, it, it, we're getting there, aren't we? We're getting to the point where something's going to happen soon. Yeah, I mean, I I, I if. They don't add anything. One, but I think it is the whole thing's moot because I think they're definitely going to add someone. Right. Um. You have to replace. You, you have to find another big, big. I mean, you know, yeah. to, to take some pressure pressure off Cliff. Um. And I think they'll add, add one of those guys, and you know, it would help to get a wing. And then, I, you know, who's going to replace for that Jacob Young role? I mean, you know, no. You and he's, I were at you know, all these games. Like, yeah. you know, are they in the NCAA tournament without him? You know, down the stretch. No. no. Yeah, yeah, we, who was the best player? Who was the team MVP over the final 10 games of the season? It was Jacob Young. Who's going to replace him? You know, that's going to be, you know, and, and as far as I, I, you know, I'm looking at the names of the guys 
two they've been involved with, you know, that's going to be probably the million dollar question. You know, who's going to replace that guy, that on on the ball defender, that guy who could fill so many roles, who can, you know, really just take over an offense at, you know, at various points. I mean, who's going to replace him? Right. Uh, all right. Another basketball question. We've gotten this question a lot and we've tried to answer it, but answer it again. Were there any rumblings of chemistry issues in the men's basketball locker, e.g. playing time or NIL? I mean, I don't know, Cratch, these guys were together for 14 months and without anybody else, I think we'd be kind of naive to think that there weren't, you know, that they didn't get sick of each other on some level. But I don't know that anything that happened here departure wise was related to chemistry. Do you? Politi, Politi and I were spent like two weeks, you know, back to back at, in Indianapolis and we were tired of each other at the end of those two weeks. I mean, oh, I know you were you were like leaving the you know, pretending oh, I, I get some work to do and you get lunch by yourself. I know you're doing. Uh, no question. And I got, I ordered, I ordered Indian food to my hotel room in Indianapolis. That's how sick of you I was. How about that? I got Uber Eats delivered Indian food to the courtyard in Indianapolis. So I didn't have to get lunch with you. It was good too. Completely fair. I got a recommendation for you if you're in Indianapolis and need Indian food. I'm sorry. What were we talking about? Oh yeah. Uh, chemistry issues. What do you think? No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, the amount of time those guys spent together this season, all the years, you know, this is a team that's been together for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that those natural things spark up. But that being said, I, I felt like I know this is a very you know hot topic of discussion on the Rutgers boards and everything, but I don't think it had a direct impact on the season because if a team truly has locker room dysfunction, they don't pick themselves off the mat several times like this Rutgers team did during the regular season. They don't win a game in the NCAA tournament. They don't come within a eyelash of the Sweet 16. So I thought that, you know, I'm sure there was some, you know, sort of interpersonal, ish, you know, quirks and everything with this team. But did it mean anything to the grand scheme of the season? I don't think at all. They also didn't have a COVID pause. I mean, and what does that yeah. mean? Yeah. I mean, they sacrificed for each other. So, I mean, you know, the idea that, you know, these players weren't, weren't sacrificing and they weren't, you know, committed. Um, look, I mean, you know, 14 months is an awful long time to, to have to deal with what, what, what they were going through, not being a college student, not being, not, not having the, the, the all, all the different outlets that you would normally uh, use, uh, you know, go out to dinner and do, do all the other things that you could be as a college, you know, student athlete, you know, it's just, I just, I, there's no way. I, I just cannot see, you know, whether or not, you know, chemistry, maybe, I mean, but we, but you have to also remember we have, we weren't around either. I mean, it was different from a media landscape too, because normally we would be at practice, you know, once or twice a week and we'd be able to have our finger on the pulse a little bit better. Just, just for the listeners, as a cautionary tale, if you're going to order Indian food at your hotel now, this, no, just, I just want to make sure this is important <laughs> while, while it's on my mind. So they're not cleaning the rooms between so if you're staying there for five days, they don't come in and service the room because of COVID. So I got the Indian food like on day two and I just threw like some garlic naan away and in, in, in the, in the car- garbage can, you know, by day four, the place smelled like, you know, you know, downtown New Delhi on like in a, in a, in a street market. It was just the, the it was, it was pretty, it was a pretty strong smell in my, in my, ho- in my hotel room. So just keep that in mind if you're, if you're traveling here, just, just a little tip. Back, back, in college, back in college, I used to be a delivery uh, uh, driver, and I, I picked up Indian food one night and and spilled all over the back uh, of, of my Honda hatchback, and I had to sell the car because the, the, the sauces <laughs> all got in, like the fabrics and everything. I just could not get it out. I just I had, to sell, I had to sell the car. There's oh, nothing man. I could do. Oh, okay. Another cautionary tale. The news you can use here on the podcast. Uh, all right, more questions. We've got uh, a few uh, football questions. True or false? Rutgers will go to a New Year's bowl game within five, the next five years. New Year's six bowl game within the next five years. Cratch, when we want to feel that one, someone using our true or false, a, re- a listener, a re- reader using our true or false against us here. <laughs> I will say false. You're going to say false. All right. Wow. Next five years, you don't think they can get to a – I guess that's, you know – that's a big ask. Sorry, we disagree. That's first or second in the Big Ten, and yeah. we talked about that this last week. I think they're going to be in a you know a New Year's Day ball. Um, uh, the the New Year's Six, you know, the, the top sixteen in the country. Um, no, false. The big ask. I agree. It, 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 uh, let's see them take the next step first before we start thinking they're going to take two steps after that. Um, here's a funny one. 
When is the last time that those of us that are both Rutgers and Yankee fans felt better about Rutgers? These are curious times. That's a good point. I mean, God, the Yankees are a hot mess, aren't they? My goodness, Aaron Boone on the hot seat. Um, I, I blame Brian Crashman more for that than Hal Steinbrenner for, for not overspending to make the team better. But this is an interesting, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. When was the last time, Sarge, can you think of one, Crash? When was the last time that Rutgers fans, I mean, 2006, the Yankees would have been in the playoff probably. I mean, what, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, 1991, maybe? Uh, Rutgers in the NCAA tournament, you know, Yankees had like Hensley Mullins and Kevin Moss, I think. <laughs> Jesse Barfield. Alfaro Espinosa. No, that was, that was <laughs> the before that. Paul Perez. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean it's uh it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. How about how about like how about Rutgers Mets fans? Maybe you know, like imagine those people. Uh, no, nah, I would say they they Rutgers has been better than the Mets in recent history. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you got an answer for that one or no? Uh, it's a it's a great question. Pro- it's been a long time, like you said, the mid two thousands. You know, when Rutgers football was 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 doing well, Yankees were doing pretty well as well. Um. I'm trying to think even like, you know, 76. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you know, Yankee, yeah, well, the Yankees were in the World Series in 76. Tie, like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, lost to the Reds, right, in 76. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, it is. I think they lost to the – yeah, 76 was the Reds. Yep, yeah, they lost, lost to the Reds in 76. They won in 77, 78. Beat the Dodgers. That was a, that was a glorious Dodgers. time. Ron yep. Guidry and, and the Garden State Bowl. They had, they had all that good stuff back then. The Reggie Jackson. 78, yeah. 78, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Good stuff. Uh uh, all right, um, find some more stuff. What football recruits are we going to have to worry about flipping before National Signing Day in December? I mean, obviously, Kevin Wimsat is. And I w- look, I, when I say that, I don't think that there's any sign he's going to flip. I mean, Cratch, you talked to his mom, and mom's pretty all in on this, right? Yeah, you know, uh, I worked with Todrick on a story we had on Monday. Todrick talked to his mom. Obviously, I listened to, you know, their interview. Uh, yeah, they're they're pretty all in. They're they're looking at houses closer to uh, closer to New Jersey and everything. They they were enamored with the reception they got when they kind of took their own self guided visit of Rutgers. Um, very high on Shiano, Sean Gleason, you know. Uh, under Tech One Underwood, Fran Brown, you know they're they're pretty they're pretty jazz, you know. And I, I think uh, for you know I think the biggest everyone kind of made it out to be Rutgers versus Kentucky, Rutgers versus Kentucky. Talking to Gavin, talking to his mom, it was Rutgers versus Cincinnati. So I think Cincinnati is truly you know if you're worried about someone coming in and flipping him, I would worry about Cincinnati, especially if they have a great season potentially and maybe make a push for the playoffs. I'm pretty sure they're playing Notre Dame this season. So if they beat the Irish, they've got a shot to crash the party potentially. That's where I would worry about the Rutgers. I think you know, Marion Brown, the wide receiver from Florida, I think every, you know everyone always gets nervous about Florida kids flipping at the last second, going to Miami, going to Florida. So there's a couple guys on there. But I also think that Rutgers has a strong chance and a staff that can weather – a tough season, which is what I think is coming for the Scarlet Knights. So I don't know if it's going to be that much of an issue, uh, but it's definitely something you got to have to worry about a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess the key, though, Sarge, with this, with, with this uh, kid is that he already had high level offers. So it's not like someone, yep. it's not like he can be, not like, like Notre Dame can come in and say, we want you. Notre Dame already said they want, him, yeah. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think recruiting, not just the athletes, not, not, not just, you know, on the high school level right now, but I think the 115 guys in the program, if this, if this past week wasn't any indication, it's a year round thing. People talking about flipping recruits. I mean, you know, I think it was, you know, recruiting players and, and currently in the program when Art Stikowski, um, who, you know, uh, you know, pretty close to, to, to the you know, start of, of spring camp, you know, enters the transfer portal. With, with the number of, uh, of players who, who we expect to enter the transfer portal in the next couple of weeks, couple of months, not just at Rutgers, but, you know, every, everywhere. I mean, you know, is Greg Ciano literally like recruiting his current players every, yeah. every day. Yeah. It's just, it is a fascinating thing. I know Greg Ciano wanted to go back to college. You know, he always felt like he was a college coach, but you always have to wonder like, you know, is there a part of him that like he experienced the NFL and, and, you know, was this the reason why back in 2011 that he wanted to get out? Because I mean, it is you know, in, insane the amount of hours that he must log, you know, talking to players and talking to recruits. All right, a couple more from the insider portal, our port, our portal of questions. Uh, Jonathan Lewis, has he found a landing spot? Zard, you talked to him recently. 
I did. Yeah, I, I, I talked to him. I did a transfer portal story in general last week, but then uh, talking to Jonathan, I, you know, I thought his story is pretty fascinating and we'll be uh, reporting it you know, at some point this week. <laughs> Yeah, he has not. Um, but the interesting thing about Jonathan Lewis is he, you know, obviously he was a high, uh, a high profile quarterback recruit coming out of St. Peter's prep. Um, you know, he, he, you know, I guess about a year and a half competed for a job. We, you know, we saw, you know, it, you know, the, 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 you know, coming out party against Morgan state four touchdowns, five total, I think. Um, and, and then just kind of disappeared from there. Uh, he is uh, working out a quarterback. You know, that's his goal is to play quarterback again. I think everyone in this camp is kind of realistic. They don't expect him to, to, to end up at a power five school. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe like a lower level, um, you know, F F FBS school, but more likely he's going to end up at F FCS. Um, the problem is, you know, FCS schools have been playing all spring. So their, their scholarship numbers are, are, are in flux. So, we have to get through this, uh, you know, this spring season here to really know whether, what, you know, where, where all these uh, schools stand. I think Jonathan Lewis is like probably about, you know, a thousand other, um, you know, uh, guys in the transfer portal right now, uh, probably going to end up at FCS and, you know, it'll probably be a good story when, when it happens because he will probably be uh, playing quarterback again. All right. One last one really quick. Cratch, I think you can address this. Do you think Rutgers fans will be required to be vaccinated to attend football games this fall? You got to be vaccinated to go to class. You got to be vaccinated to go to games. Is that possible? Uh, I think it's possible. I, I think that what we're seeing, I believe me, would correct me if I'm wrong with the, with the pro teams is that it's, it's a proof of a vaccination, full vaccination or a negative PCR test within 72 hours. So I think that might be uh, the way it goes. Uh, I don't know if you'll completely restrict, uh, you know, all vac vaccinated people only to the stadium. I don't know if they would go that way, but I do think that'll be part of the factor. All right. As always, thank you for your questions. Uh, we appreciate it. NG.com slash insider. If you want to sign up, um, we'll have a lot of good stuff this summer for you. So please keep that in mind. All right. Lots going on. Uh, field hockey, women's soccer, lacrosse. We got field hockey beat Penn State, and then the head coach had a baby. That's a pretty big week. I mean, that that's cool. <laughs> what what's going on with the other sports, Cratch? Uh, men's lacrosse regular season finale coming up. I believe they're at Michigan. Uh, they beat Johns Hopkins senior day last week. So. Uh, Barring something unforeseen, it looks like the Scarlet Knights are finally going back to the NCAA tournament. So big accomplishment for that program. A uh, women's lacrosse has had a, you know three to, you know in the top. I think they're ranked 16th in the country. Several big wins this year against ranked opponents. Uh, they're waiting for the Big Ten tournament. I think they probably have to win the Big Ten tournament to get into the NCAA tournament. But a tremendous season for them. Field hockey going to the Big Ten tournament looks like they should be in the national tournament but uh with this code year you never know uh women's soccer is in the ncaa tournament they're going to play their first round game later this week the entire tournament will be in uh Cary, north carolina i believe so they're bubbling th that tournament men's uh, soccer i think finished four four and one did not make the tournament um baseball had a tough weekend lost three out of four to iowa uh but they still have a shot you know and their schedule gets pretty tough down the stretch you got michigan this week it was in the national title game you know the last national title game I believe the national title series got Nebraska coming up. They've been at the top of the big 10. So uh, we're going to kind of find out where this baseball team stands. Uh, softball really, really uh, poor season for them. Uh, they've really struggled. I think they're going to mercifully end the season this coming weekend. Uh, I think tennis had a win. I think they're starting their big 10 tournament. And uh, I think that's everyone else. Rowing had a big weekend at the Big Ten Invitational. So uh, everything's kind of wrapping up for Rutgers. And, you know, they have a couple teams in the tournament. I think that if you, every year we do the, you know, athletic department win-loss record, I think they're going to be under 500 as a department this year. Uh, they had a winning record last year, I believe, by a couple of games. Uh, but I think they're going to have more teams in the tournament than they've had in recent years. And, that, and that's a better, I mean, that's a better guide, I would say, too. Uh, can they get, women's, women's soccer team make a run? Is that, is that within the possibility here? Or are they, uh, are they kind of uh, early exiters? I think that they, they should be able, they're, they're favored in their first round game. And I think Clemson, which is one of the top teams in the country, would be waiting in the second round. So they get a little magic against Clemson, you know, a little lightning in a bottle like the men's basketball team did. Who knows? Maybe they can make a run. All right. Anything else, Sarge? What else you got? I don't think. 
if you ask that question to Pat Hobbs, I don't think he would have been as, as you know, and no disrespect, but Cratch is really on uh, the, the Rutgers, yeah. you know, all sports beat. I mean, wow, that was pretty incredible, impressive. I just, I'm blown away by that. Oh, uh, wrestling added a grad oh. transfer, Greg oh, Bolsack, four-time national Jeez. qualifier from Clarion, depth of 197. Could be going to be interesting. You know, wow. him and Billy Jans are battling out. You know, they're neither of them are big enough to go to heavyweight. They're not going to 84, but you got paused there. Mm. So, you know, Rutgers is you know that the Rutgers is making that next. I know. We, Steve, we talked during the season about like when were they going to finally win? You know the big dual meet. You know they haven't knocked down that kind of achievement yet, but they are building depth at every spot in the lineup, which is what you need to be a national caliber program. I've always said, Sarge, you need depth at one ninety seven. That's, right. that's, that's your fault for not cutting off the podcast. My fault probably for giving Cratch too much credit there, but we, 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 just, we, we couldn't we get away said, without That's it. Okay, wrestling. signing off. No, no, no. We got it. No, we had right to get in. the wrestling in. Right, right to the depth of 197. <laughs> we got it. We know now. You're fin- that's good. Though. On that note, perhaps we should dive off between we find out what's happening at 156. I just made up a weight class. How you like that? All right, signing off. Steve Politi, Keith Sargent, James Cratch. We'll be back soon with some spring football wrap-up, perhaps? Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Rutgers Rant. To participate in the conversation and receive live updates about the Scarlet Knights directly to your phone, sign up at nj.com slash insider. You haven't heard enough from me yet, huh? Steve Politi here for one last thank you to this episode's sponsor, New Brunswick Development Corporation, and to listeners like you who make it all the way to the end of the show. We'll see you again soon.